In the year 1605, an anonymous map maker drafted a rather crude map of the Florida Peninsula. Of the map's many curious features, perhaps the most striking is a name that appears along the southeastern coastline, next to a proposed new Spanish fortress. It reads, Vocas de Miguel Mora, or the mouths of Miguel Mora. The fort was never built, but for the next two centuries, mariners and mapmakers continued to refer to the area by his name. But who was Miguel Mora? The story takes us back 40 years, to the year 1565. On March 15 of that year, Pedro Menendez de Avilés signed a private contract, or asiento, with Spain's King Philip II, outlining the terms of a new conquest expedition to Florida. An experienced mariner, merchant, and military commander, Menendez quickly began to recruit colonists for his new venture. While many of them came from northern Spain, Menendez's forces included men and women from other parts of the Spanish peninsula, as well as Portugal, Flanders, Greece, North Africa, France, and Italy. Almost 2,000 people joined the expedition, including sailors and soldiers, artisans and craftsmen, slaves and free blacks, and more than two dozen women. One of the recruits was a young man from Cadiz in southern Spain. His name was Miguel Mora. But just 11 days after Menendez signed his contract, King Philip II learned that a French garrison had been established in La Florida under the command of René de Laudonniere. Indeed, Laudonniere's men had built a fortress along the southern banks of the River May, present-day St. John's River. They called it Fort Caroline. Even more alarming for the Spanish crown were rumors that a large French fleet was about to set sail for Florida. Menendez's colonization efforts would have to wait. The French settlement would have to be destroyed first, and men like Miguel Mora would have to fight for it. On June 29, 1565, Menendez's fleet departed from southern Spain. Ten weeks later, on September 8, Menendez stepped ashore 40 miles south of the French Fort Caroline. There, he established his first settlement, which he named St. Augustine. A week later, Menendez assembled a force of 500 men to march overland to attack the French fort. It was a bold decision. A fierce storm, perhaps a hurricane, battered Menendez's men as they made their way north through marshes and swamps. Led by two Florida Indians, the Spanish troops reached Fort Caroline in the early morning hours of September 20, 1565. Among the first Spaniards to lead the assault on Fort Caroline was Miguel Mora. The Spanish victory was swift and decisive, and soon thereafter Menendez began his ambitious enterprise to colonize the American Southeast. For Miguel Mora, his Florida adventure was about to take an unexpected turn. In 1566, during one of his voyages along the Florida coast, Miguel Mora shipwrecked in a terrible storm. He and several survivors were taken captive by the Tequesta Indians near present-day Miami. Mora spent 10 months in captivity. There I was, naked, no stockings, and fearful for my life, worried that I would be sacrificed by those Indians, dying of hunger, and a captive for a period of 10 months. Miguel Mora. After 10 months in captivity, Mora and several of his companions managed to escape he then joined Spanish expeditions to Tocobaga and Carlos before returning once more to Tequesta, the site of his 10-month captivity. In 1568, the Spanish abandoned the Tequesta settlement, along with many of the other early garrisons. Miguel Mora sailed to Cuba and then to Spain. He would never return to Florida. Yet for more than two centuries after his departure, the shoals and mouths near present-day Biscayne Bay carried his name, the name of a Spanish soldier and captive whose Florida experiences have long since been forgotten. <laughs>